Hi friends, I'm back with another episode. Today we are going to discuss CA cervix on popular demand. And uh, CA cervix is, you know, uh, cervix is a biggish uh, topic and uh, we are going to cover pre-invasive lesion screening and prevention in another class. Today we are just going to talk about carcinoma cervix. Right, so quickly we are going to go through things that we already know. Second most common um, cause of cancer in women is CA cervix in India. Okay, most common is breast cancer. Uh, bimodal distribution, it happens in the third to fourth decade and then again in the fifth to sixth decade. Most common is your squamous cell carcinoma counting for around 75% and then adenocarcinoma counting for 25% or so. Risk factors we already know, uh, multiparity, early age at childbirth, m m uh, multiple sexual partners, poor socioeconomic status, STDs, smoking for squamous cell carcinoma. One question that may be asked to you that is asked sometimes is that uh, our OCP is a risk factor for this. This is a risk factor for adenocarcinoma. Uh, after, if you take OCPs for more than five years, then the risk for adenocarcinoma increases and it is a reversible risk. That means if you stop taking OCPs, the risk reduces, right? Now, how does this patient present to you? Again, we already know this. She will typically come with copious discharge PV, you know, and uh, not responding to your treatment for PID, then she will have abnormal uterine bleeding, postcoital bleeding. And when this patient comes to us, we will do, after your general physical examination, a per speculum examination. And on this examination, we will typically find a growth on the cervix, which may or may not be extending into the vagina. So this growth can be, you know, ulcerative, ulceroproliferative, or just plain proliferative, big mass, right? So what do we do? Uh, when we have a person who is coming with this sort of a mass or a growth, we will do a punch biopsy. Friends, very important to remember, we will do a biopsy when we already see a growth. This is not a screening. So we are not going to do PAPs. PAPs is for women in which we are screening. That means we see nothing, we see no growth and we want to see if there is something. So we will do a punch biopsy. So after the biopsy is sent for histopathology and the report comes back as CA cervix, it will tell us what kind of a CA cervix is it, it is, whether it is squamous or whether it is adenocarcinoma. Next, what we need to do is decide the treatment for this patient and for that we need to stage so typically for all gynae cancers we have surgical staging that is when we do the surgery intra-op and based on some of the histopathology report we decide uh, what the stage of the cancer is and accordingly uh, further treatment is decided ca cervix is different ca cervix is based on clinical staging earlier it used to be based purely on clinical staging now we have allowed more modalities in so it is mainly clinical but we also allow for histopathology and radiology to dictate some of the staging right so, and this is very, very important because, uh, you know, uh, in CA cervix is such a cancer that, you know, mostly in CA ovary or CA endometrium, you will see that there is surgery followed by some adjuvant therapy like uh, chemotherapy or radiation. CA cervix is one such cancer that if you do both, if you give both to a patient, yes, the locoregional uh, recurrence and all of that will decrease. But the morbidity given to the patient is so much by giving both the modalities that we do that we prefer to do only one thing we stick to only one thing so we will do either surgery or radiation and what we do will be based on the staging that you do in the pre-op period right so uh, in the same breath i would like to say it is very important to do a good clinical examination and one examination that even postgraduates in gynecology forget to do in a patient of ca cervix is a pvr or per vaginal and per rectal examination right so why that is important, what it will tell us, I will come to in a bit. When we do the staging, you will find out yourself, right? So we will never do both, again, reiterating, never doing both surgery or radiation unless, of course, incidentally detected uh, cancer is found. For example, I have done a hysterectomy for, say, AUBL. I am thinking it is a fibroid. I have taken out the uterus and on histopathology, I find that she also had CA cervix. In that case, because it was an incomplete surgery, some adjuvant treatment may be required, right? Now, coming to the staging. Staging becomes so much easier if you remember the mode of spread for CA cervix. The mode of spread for CA cervix is always direct is the most common, right? So there will always be a direct extension. So just keep following the path. First it's in the cervix, from cervix it will go to the vagina, vagina is a parametrium to the lateral pelvic wall and then to the distant organ. So that is what we will follow, right? So uh, just if we have a look at this diagram, uh, so this tiny dot that you see, we'll just come to stage one. Uh, let me just draw the uterus again. Right. So first we have stage one is basically CA cervix confined to uh, the cancer is confined to the cervix. Right. So this is just confined to the cervix. This will be stage one. Stage two will be it is going to the upper two third of the vagina. Okay. And uh, with or without parametrial involvement. Stage three will be now it is coming to lower one third of the vagina. And stage four will be 
distant metastasis like it will go to the bowel or the bladder now we will come so this is a direct spread spread this makes it easier now we will come to the sub classification so one is divided further into 1a and 1b 1a is microscopic disease microscopic meaning less than 5 mm further divided into 1a1 and 1a2 less than 3 mm and 3 to 5 mm right 1b is more you know like bigger disease so it is more than 5 mm but over here now we will take the lateral spread also to sub classify 1b so 1b1 2 and 3 less than 2 cm 2 to 4 cm and more than 4 cm right now coming to 2 2 is further classified into 2a and 2b so now we know upper two third of the vagina is involved so 2a is when only upper two third of the vagina is involved 2b is when surrounding structures or surrounding tissue parametrium is also involved that is when it becomes 2b right now uh it is involved but it is not involved up to so if we come to this diagram over here this is <laughs> i have made the pelvic bone and the parametrium is involved but it is not going up to the lateral pelvic wall right now coming to stage 3 stage 3 may it is spreading to the lower third of the vagina again a and b and also c in this one so a is only lower third of the vagina b it is spreading up to you know the lateral In involving the parametrium and going up to the lateral pelvic wall, and because it is so extensive, it will sometimes also cause your hydrourethral nephrosis. So if you have hydrourethral nephrosis, it will come to three B, right? And three C is when you have lymph nodal involvement. C one being pelvic and C two being paraortic lymph node. And four is distant metastasis. So four A is basically extra pelvic organs will be involved 4a will be when bladder and bowel mucosa is involved and this has to be biopsy proven okay you cannot just do a cystoscopy that a lot of people do preoperative preoperatively in the case of ca cervix find some bullous edema and uh, then call it 4 it is not 4 it could just be because of lymphatic obstruction so this has to be biopsy proven and 4b is distant organs right so uh, what is the modality that we are using so most of this is clinical so again if you people have paid attention you would be able to see that why the pvr that i talked about is important right because what i am doing in a pvr is essentially i have my index finger in the rectum and my thumb in the vagina and i am trying to feel the parametrium so i'm going to the fornix and i'm sort of trying to oppose my thumb and middle finger uh, index finger and see whether the tissue is infiltrated or involved so if parametrium is involved i'll be able to feel it if i do a pvr examination that is why it is important now another thing that we talked about that but we cannot find on clinical examination uh is lymph nodes so how do we investigate if lymph nodes are involved or not so the investigation of choice will be pet ct and if you want to look at the soft tissue spread then we should do an mri right now coming to the management again reiterating either surgery or chemo radiation early stage surgery young patient to preserve ovarian function surgery if it is early stage chemo radiation for advanced stage right a good dictum to remember something that will make your life much easier because you might be given clinical scenarios in which they are telling you the characteristics of the mass is if the mass is more than 4 cm in greatest dimension then it is an advanced stage cancer always go choose chemo radiation right so now coming to early stage so what all are early stage so we have 1a 1a we remember is microscopic disease so it's obviously less than 4 cm 1b1 was what 1b1 was less than 2 cm i'm sorry 1b hmm. 1b1 was less than 2 cm 1b2 we remember was 2 to 4 cm and 1b3 was more than 4 cm so i have written this in the wrong column it is not supposed to be here it will immediately go to chemo radiation column now 2a1 it seems like it is more aggressive than 1b3 and rightly so it it that's what it sounds like right but we remember again 2a1 is less than 4 cm so 2a1 we can give surgery we don't need to give them chemo radiation right now coming to ovary do we need to remove ovaries so earlier i mentioned that young patient to preserve ovarian function that means we are trying to save the ovary in other gynecological cancers we take out the ovary not so in ca cervix because in various studies it has been seen that ca cervix does not metastasize to the ovary <laughs> now coming to what surgery should be done again if you look at this diagram these are the different types of hysterectomy 
A, B and C. So A is the purple one and this you can see is very close to the uterus. That means all the structures that are suspending the uterus or are supporting the uterus like your mac and rods, cardinal ligaments, even the uterine artery, all of these are cut very close to the uterus. This is your simple extrafacial hysterectomy which will be done for the very early stages, right? 1A1. The second one you can see is somewhere, this is the lateral pelvic wall, right? Uh, the second one you can see is somewhere midway between the uterus and the lateral pelvic wall. This is what we call the Verdheim's hysterectomy or type B hysterectomy. In this we are cutting everything, uterosacrals, mac and rods, everything in the middle, right? We are taking out some more ch uh, chunk of tissue. In addition, in, you know, the first one, we are just, you know, cutting it at the cervix. We are not taking out any part of the vagina. But in stage B, we are taking out a vaginal cuff also, almost one to two centimeters. The third one, everything is, you know, like it's so extensive, it's going towards the periphery. So the cardinals are cut at your lateral pelvic wall. The uterosacrals are cut almost at their origin at the sacrum. The vagina is also, you know, we take a bigger cuff, upper one fourth to one third of the vagina. So this is your type C hysterectomy. So now coming to stage wise, what should we do? So if it is 1A1, 1A1 we remember less than 3 mm, right? So if the family is not complete, we want to give her a fertility sparing surgery, then we can do a simple conization. In conization, what we do is this is the cervix and we take a big cone, conical chunk of tissue which contains the uh, cancer. And this will be done only if there is no lymphovascular space invasion, right? This is this will suffice if there is no lymphovascular space invasion. However, if the, if the family is complete, we will do a simple extrafacial hysterectomy, which was our type A hysterectomy. If there is lymphovascular space invasion, then we should also do a pelvic lymphadenectomy, right? Coming to 1A2. Now, 1A between 1A1 and 1A2, you you think it's only 3 mm, say 3 to 5 mm, ho gaya hai. but in 1A2, the uh, risk of metastasis to lymph nodes rises significantly, right? So, whatever surgery we are doing, whether fertility sparing or complete, we also have to remove the pelvic lymph nodes. So, if you are doing a fertility sparing surgery, we can either do a cone or we can do a radical trachelectomy, both with pelvic lymph node uh, removal and if you are doing a complete surgery now we will do type B or Verdine's hysterectomy with a pelvic lymph node removal and if you are doing a fertility sparing surgery then we have to be very careful we owe it to the patient to you know sort of follow her up regularly to see the disease does not recur so for two years we'll call her for a three monthly path and then for the next three years we'll call her for a six monthly path and then if everything goes well we will return to routine screening Right. For the rest of the stages that fall in the surgical category, we will go for a type C or Meigs hysterectomy. So simple enough, <laughs> I hope. Then now coming to chemo radiation, which is the rest of the stages. So chemo radiation, as the name suggests, we are giving some form of chemo and then radiation. So what are we, why are we giving chemo? What are we giving in chemo? So chemo radiation, basically we are giving because the, uh, we are mostly giving cisplatin and if the patient is not able to tolerate cisplatin, we are giving 5-fluorouracil. So cisplatin is basically a radiation sensitizer. So if we give cisplatin, the body responds better to the radiation therapy that we are giving. So the two radiation therapies that are being given are EBRT, which is external beam radiotherapy and ICRT, which is intracavitary radiotherapy. All right. What you need to remember at your level is EBRT is basically like you taking an X-ray of the chest or an abdominal X-ray. So it is basically an external beam that is going to a huge part of your body. And this is given basically to reduce the bulk of the disease so that eventually we can go to intracavitary uh, radiotherapy. So what we are doing in intracavitary radiotherapy, another question that is asked is what isotopes you are using. So you are using iridium and cesium. So uh, what is intracavitary radiotherapy? What we are doing is we are coming, we are putting our radiotherapy probe like whatever machines that we have very close to the source where the tumor lies. So we are going to put it in the cavity, right? So this is intracavitary radiotherapy. And uh, you know, this has uh, a lot of side effects like pelvic fibrosis, vaginal stenosis and rectal irritation. So uh, what was important was to decide how much radiation to give and where to put the probe, right? So you often get questions or you must have often heard of things like point A, point B. When I was at your stage, even I did not know what point A was. I was just learning what point A was. That point A is, you know, located at this distance. 
so basically because of these very distressing side effects it was very important uh, to you know sort of balance the kind of radiation that we are giving uh, the radiation a has to be adequate and go to the entire tumor but also we have to sort of respect the mucosa the rectal mucosa and vaginal mucosa around it that we do not overdose with the radiation and uh, the side effects you know sort of increase so much that the patient is more distressed by our therapy than cancer itself right so point a initially they thought was sort of a fixed point where uh, no matter depending no matter what the patient variables the amount of uh, radiation seemed to be the same so this was a fixed reference point and the location is 2 cm lateral to the external os and 2 cm above it then there was another point that was defined which was point b which was defined solely for the purpose that sometimes the uterus is not midline and this is more close to the lateral pelvic wall and hence a more fixed point and this is nothing but a point just 3 cm lateral to point a so these are just i'm sorry so <laughs> these are just points which are used for dosimetric calculation and to see where to place the probe or how long the probe should be all right so that's it for ca cervix thank you